Okay, we're going to start out with obviously male or female. You have your project. You're going to want to open that up in Pro Tools. Make sure you can download those sessions. They should be all good to go. We put some more up there for the recording class, and that worked fine. Get through all the screens. Make sure that you are set with Playback Engine for the device that you're using. So set up Playback Engine is the, the Scarlet if you're working in here, if you're working somewhere else, um, which you probably won't be. <laughs> just make sure that, that that is selected and that it is your input and output for this project. Now what I have in here in both the project, like I said last time, is three second or a three beep cues for at two different speeds, depending on what you want. You would want to line those up with the end of that region, that clip, to the start of the thing that you're going to work on. So it's to give you a kind of timing cue to then start talking. If you find that you don't want that and that doesn't work for you, mute them. Don't use it. It's up to you. Uh, they're there if you want to use them. You're going to have to create a track because you want to be able to uh, say the dialogue along with this. I caution you that if your headphones are loud or if you have anything playing through a speaker, obviously that's going to come through the mic that you talk into. So maybe keep your, if you're listening along with the audio, other than just looking at the video, make sure that that's low. Make sure you know what that line's going to be pretty, pretty well paced before you get too crazy into this process. So I'm going to do a new track or I probably shouldn't use key commands, track menu, new track, all of this stuff that comes up as default is all that we're going to need. So I'm just going to create that track. I like to label that track so that when I do look at the things that are in my project, I know what they are as I go through clip list. And we'll talk about those areas more as we work. So I double click on that name and I'm just going to do my initials and VO for voiceover. <clears throat> now that track is set for me to record on. So if I listened to this here, this will be the interesting part. Should be okay right now. Maybe not. You know what you should be asking for in your healthcare? So if I said, you know what you should be asking for in your healthcare? I'll probably forget that line as I go and do this. Remember, we're just doing the ADR. We don't have to worry about any of the music or anything. I want to do a couple of things to get this set up. I want to set that region of where I'm going to be recording. So setting a region here in Pro Tools, when I click anywhere, on the screen, um, depending on what my my tool changes to. So when I'm over a clip, you'll notice that this changes from what we call selector to grabber. If I'm up here in the timeline, it's just that selector because I'm selecting the point where I'm going to play from. If I click and drag up here, I can set that region. I get an in and an out point, and then I can adjust those to where I need them to be. So I'm just going to say that like this is my, uh, darn it. What you should be asking for in your health? You know Let's go a little bit farther. In your health care, to like here. You know what you should be asking for in your health care? Okay. You know what you should be asking for? That sets that region. If I wanted to do that in a different way, I could, of course, click on a clip. It puts that <laughs> region up here, and then I can move that around. I think the easier way is to just kind of set that, find out where I want to go. Notice as I move this, show you this for a second. As I move this, it jumps to that next grid line, which can be nice or not so nice. In non-musical stuff, that can be a bit of a pain. Those modes for having that jump around like that are over here in Pro Tools. Slip is kind of the most movable one, it kind of takes away that ability to snap. And then I can just say and put it exactly where I want. I can move a region exactly where I want. I can move a piece of audio exactly where I want. So slip mode is nice. Shuffle is going to, as soon as you make any kind of cut, it's going to slam those pieces back together, which in music is awesome, but in dialogue it's going to give you some problems. So you'll probably use slip or grid mode the most. So if I go back here. This is wonky. If I go back here and set that back up, so there's my endpoint, <laughs> and 
let's do this so I can actually get to my mouse. And if we come back over to here. You know what? Right, healthcare was here. So that's the right you spot. Okay, so I'm ready to go. I could align one of these beep tracks here to the beginning of where that is. So I know that's gonna be right here. I'm gonna come back here, reset that. Notice anywhere that I click in this mode that I'm in, it's gonna reset that. So I wanna make sure I set that last. Um, I now will loop through that recording that's right here. I set that input on my voiceover track and this is where I might get some feedback. So now I have my mic ready. It's this one that's going through the focus right. Um, not going to turn up that volume because I don't know what's going to happen as I have both of these systems recording at the same time. I'm going to do that line over and over and over. The key is to go up to this record button up here. I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to loop record. And then every time that that loops, it's going to create another take. Now we need to make sure that in our preferences, and this was being a little bit weird in here, it'll be interesting to see what happens for you guys. Notice I don't have a way to say yes, I want to have this change. But I've done this a couple of times and canceled and it's worked. So I want to make sure that automatically create new playlists when loop recording is on. So mine is set. So that's we're going to have to check on your stations to see are you actually getting, there's supposed to be a blue button here that when I hit return, it's actually working, but the button is just not showing up. So I want to make sure that that's checked, meaning every time this goes back, it's going to create this next take, this next take, this next take, and then we're going to uh, choose the take that works the best. Now I would do as many takes until you nail it as close as possible. It's easier to do the recording than it is to do lots and lots of editing and moving around with elastic audio. It's just so much easier to do that. So as I do this, this isn't going to be perfect, but if I do... So if I record and play, you know what you should be asking for in your healthcare? You know what you should be asking for in your healthcare? You know what you should be asking for in your healthcare? You know what you should be asking for in your healthcare? Once I hit spacebar to stop, it looks like, okay, I just have this one thing here. <laughs> but if I switch over here on the track header, I'll go a little slower, sorry. If I go to this track header, I'm currently looking at waveform view for this track. <laughs> If I switch over to playlist view, and I zoom back out, here are the different takes that I recorded. I can decide on which one of those I want to use. Last one on top, the other one's here. If I decide that I want to audition each one of those, I can go in and solo those out. Now, we hear some weird stuff because I'm having it play in the background with my mic on and I shouldn't be doing that. Um, this one would be very hard to align because I have that original sound in the background, which we do not want. But if I solo these out and say, you know what, I really like this take, I can um, up, oops. I can select that take, it's solo, I'm gonna use my grabber. I can select that take and then notice on this little track header over here, I get this arrow. And this is the promote arrow, so it's gonna promote this take to the track, main track view. And that's gonna be the one that I'm gonna work on. So if I promote that, you see it changes. I can go back to waveform view, just so it's cleaner to work with. And now I have that take in there. So that process is pretty easy. It's just making sure that as I go through that, that I nail that as close as I possibly can in all those takes. Doing as many as I can is easier than starting and stopping and do another one, starting, stopping, doing another one. Just let them go as many times as you want to do them. Make sense so far? Pretty straightforward. Okay, I can also then adjust these if I need to later. So I can come down here. Let me zoom back in here. It'll be easier to see this. Down here is where I can enable my elastic audio. And so what that does is it says to the computer, chop this up into parts where you see things happening. It kind of is based off what we call the transients, the larger portions of that wave. Uh, mark those off and then allow me to go in there and move those if I need to. So this is the process of that take is really good. I'm really close. 
But even if I watch that video and I play my track, I'm just a little bit off in a couple of areas, and especially with this UC Health or with the Nike one, because those are recorded after anyway, and they have some sync to the other people, depending on, um, in the Nike, there's other people, so you're already syncing it to somebody else's lip movements. So monophonic is what I want to choose, because I have one microphone, there's one of me, and it will split up that audio, and we can take a look at that those splits by going into this warp mode, and you'll see all those pieces that are now available in this clip. Then I just need to decide where do I want to move stuff. Um, I tend to go to beginning and end of the clip that I'm working on because if I start to drag one of these, look what happens to the whole clip. It basically is going to change my timing of everything double clicking on one of these coming back to this end and double clicking here will now set that to move just in between those regions so now if i do this notice it doesn't affect the entire timing but it will affect everything between those so let's say this is uh, a word a word a word a word a word and i know this third word is not where i want it it might be better to adjust to smaller pieces i should zoom in a little more So that it will not affect. Ah, uh, come on, come on, cursor. There we go. It will only affect between the ones that are held down. And notice I have another one over there. So if I make sure that I only have two, it will only adjust between those two, and it will time compress on either side. So it will move it a little bit and squish the stuff before and stretch the stuff after. Or if I move the other one, it will squish the stuff before I move that one after. So I want to make sure that I decide where are those little bits that I'm going to move. If you spend a lot of time doing this, it means you probably could have just done those takes better and recorded it again. I'm hoping that you don't have to do a whole lot of this, that maybe you just tweak it a little bit. And on this first one, if you do one or two and you're like, eh, it's pretty close, but it didn't really turn out as good as I wanted. I want to do the ADR too because it has two characters and it's gonna be a little bit more involved and it's more, um, it's just a little bit harder to do and it's old time so the pace of it is a little bit faster. You'll see that when we look at that. That's that process, that's all I want you to do. I don't want you to have to export this at all. I want you to just take that, see what you can do, videos in there. Uh, I can bring up that video with, uh, go into my window and add that or command nine on the uh, numeric pad, any of those with the little box around it is the numeric pad instead of the one above the keyboard. <coughs> and um, that's pretty much it. Match to what it looks like as opposed to what it sounds like. Because if it was us and I did the stuff on set, then it'd be much easier for me to match to the audio than to the video. Since we're not that person or in the other video, we're not those people, it's a little bit harder to do. Make sense? Confusing at all? I go through some stuff, go through it again, just to be like, here's how we did that, Steve. Well, I just wanted to make sure, so we're just doing that every time for like different parts of the audio itself. So we're cutting it into like different parts, do that segment over yep. and over and over again, and then, okay. Yep, so I would do sentence by sentence. The bigger the section, the harder it is to keep looping that part. So I would do sentence by sentence. When I'm done with this, okay, there we go. Then I would take my region, find the next group. I can stay on that track, and I can do the next thing and the next takes, and that will add those takes below that, and then I would check those takes for that next sentence. So you're going to get a lot, a lot, a lot of takes when you go to that playlist view. And then when we're done, it looks synced up. Then you just kill the actual audio and the actual... Thing. Exactly. Okay. Yep, and then you're going to mute that, and now all I have is just this right here. Got it. Okay. Now if I move those beeps in there... Obviously, I'm going to have to set that region to be inclusive of those beeps. So each time it loops, I'm going to get beep, 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 blah, 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 blah. beep, 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 blah, 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 blah. So if that helps you, which it is traditionally the way it's done, um, you can add that in there. Um, if you would rather create, because let's say you have 
10 sentences. There's not that many, but let's say you have 10 sentences and you do five takes for each. That playlist <laughs> is going to get 50 long because the first one's going to be five and the next one's going to be five below that and five below that. So that playlist is going to get really, really long every time you switch this voiceover track to playlist view. So if you want to, each sentence could go on a new track. Just make sure that your input is still set to the same one because Pro Tools will change it to the next available input on the interface. And then if you want to, so let's say I created, so I did that sentence. I want to do another sentence, so I make a new track, Command Shift N, I bring that track in. I could bring that up above so that now it's not so far low. If I have like 10 tracks, then those 10 tracks, I'm, I'm scrolling up and down to get to that video and that audio. Maybe um, raising that track up every time you create it is then going to be a little bit easier so you stay in the top part of this interface. Yes? So is the playlist mode like a message within the track itself, or is it necessarily like within the clip? Like if I move the clip uh, to another track, would the playlist still be there? That's a good question. Let's take a look. So if I go to playlist and I grab that, it's nested in the track. So once I decide that that has been uh, put up to the track, let's see if I can do, it will pull it. So if I move that away and realign it and I re-promote a different take, it will put it back to that original spot. So that's a little, little different. I'll do this. That's a good question. What else? Feel confident to be able to do that. The process itself is the hard part. The ADR part is not all that difficult. Hopefully. Now the second one we're going to do is, uh, this is about 30 seconds for, for male, female. The second one is maybe like two minutes long and it has two characters. So uh, if you want to start thinking about, there's a male and a female character and I would like to have each character done by that same sex so it doesn't sound weird as we watch that movie to have somebody be like hi I'm not gonna go to the party that would just be kind of weird so be thinking already who are you gonna get to to do that um, we have Jessica and Lexi so don't make them do everyone's project find other people to help you out uh, they have many more males to choose from sound good I want to give you some time to work on that while I'm here. If you want to get in there and kind of see how that works, I would at least download those files and make sure that you have those files so that when you come in here, you can just get right to them. Are they in Canvas? Yeah, they're in Canvas. Well, there's a link to the Google Drive, sorry. Oh. The recording sessions I did. The future ones I'll all do in there as a zipped file because that worked really well for recording. Um, I'm going to print this list and send that around as well.